thank you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Leon, for your kind introduction. Um, I would like to commence by thanking the scientific committee of the APRW for selecting my abstract for its whole presentation and, of course, to CM Corporation for granting me the chance of publicly presenting it despite the well, the well known current circumstances. <clears throat> During the next 15 minutes approximately, I will talk about my experience in the analysis of dry commodities using pressurized sample destruction techniques with the aid of an edge instrument. This presentation is divided into big segments. In the first one, I will be explaining the development of an automatic destruction uh, method of T. The main objective was to successfully extract and track on from T, overcoming the issues associated with traditional catcher's extraction. During the second segment, I will be discussing the extension of the method for the multi-residue extraction and analysis of coffee and cocoa bean matrices. Without further ado, let's begin with the first section. Sample hydration is a standard procedure prior to sample extraction in many different multi-residue methods. The Sante document itself recommends the addition of water prior to sample extraction. This step may increase the extraction of poor compounds from the sample, but it can hinder the extraction of certain poor compounds, and it can also cause the co-extraction of matrix components that can compromise the analysis of certain target analytes. Furthermore, water generally has to be removed in a later step by the means of magnesium sulfate, calcium chloride, or another desiccant agent thus increasing the consumable expenses. However, for these compounds that require a hydration step prior to their extraction, if water is to be avoided, then more energetic extraction conditions must be applied. These conditions are not normally within the standard extraction techniques available in laboratories, or if they are, they carry another other kind of drawbacks of their own. What is a possible alternative then? The alternative is the automatic sample extraction using techniques such as pressurized liquid extraction and sample heating. The concept of automation is by no means a foreign concept by now. The interest in automated extraction within laboratories has garnered more and more interest from laboratories in recent years. This becomes evident when looking at this graph made with the number of publications that discuss automated sample extraction on Scapus. Increased robustness, reproducibility, and personal and time savings are some of the main desirable benefits. One such example are automatic shakers. In recent years, automatic shakers have gained a foothold in laboratories as an alternative to manual shaking. Personally, personally speaking, when we offer a training course in our laboratory, questions regarding our automatic shaking instruments are always, always very abundant. These instruments offer a wide variety of functions, such as shaking, sample shaking and heating, and even sample milling of dry materials. Instruments that perform automatic solid phase extractions have been in the market for some time. And furthermore, there have been attempts at automatic manual extraction methods, such as the catches, although the literature is scarce in this regard. After this, I, I hope, brief introduction, I will discuss the problem we were facing with the extraction of anthraquinone from tea. Anthraquinone, as many of you may know, is an organic compound of interest linked to adverse health effects in humans. Currently, its maximum residue limit is set at 20 ppb in tea within the European Union. The presence of anthraquinone in tea was first reported by EFSA in 2012, and ever since, 52 notices have been issued for this commodity, plus several more notices in other commodities, such as paprika. The reported concentrations reach as high as 360 ppb, exceeding almost 20 times the current MRL. The specific method for the extraction of pesticides from tea was developed by some colleagues of mine within our laboratory, Dr. Lozano and Dr. Reischke. This method includes a hydration step prior to extraction and a dispersive solid phase cleanup step using calcium chloride instead of magnesium sulfate. The extracts were analyzed then by liquid chromatography and gas sorry, chromatography coupled to triple quadrupole mass spectrometry. When we applied this method for the extraction and analysis of anthraquinone in T, we were faced what, with what can be seen on screen on the left side. At the MRL 20 ppb, anthraquinone was barely distinguishable from co-extracted matrix interferences in two out of three of its most intense mass transitions. Deuterating and fracking, however, was not affected by the co-extracted matrix components. 
Thus, we moved on from manual extraction to the automatic extraction of tea using pressure liquid extraction. For the development of the automated method, an edge instrument lent to us by CEM Corporation was uh, employed. In this table, the most important parameters for each method are summarized. First, solvent volume added, then bubbling time, hold time, which is the time the sample was kept in contact with the extraction solvent, the temperature, and a rinse step, which is solvent that is passed through the sample with a hold time of zero seconds. First, we run methods AM01 to AM06. The most appropriate solvent was chosen among acetonitrile and ethyl acetate. Recovery values were twice higher when using acetonitrile for untracking and extraction from tea. Regarding the cleanup step, it was deemed unnecessary. Moving on, we can find the next block of, te of tests, beginning with AM07 and ending with AM09. In this case, a setting called bubbling was tested as a means to increase solvent and sample mixing within the instrument. Hold time, however, was reduced to compensate for the extra bubbling time. These tests were unsuccessful, and in the case of AM07, and fracinone could not be recovered at any of the spiked levels. Recovery was higher in AM09, which included a rinse step, for which we took note. Finally, methods AM10 to AM12 were tested. The final developed method, AM12, consisted of no bubbling plus an extended hold time of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The validated LOQ was set at 7.5 ppv, with an average recovery of 101%. On the right side, there is a picture of the edge instrument, like the one we used in this work. Finally, for the extraction of anthracinone with sample hydration, the key points are that acetonitrile is a more efficient solvent than ethyl acetate, bubbling was deemed counterproductive, a rinse step significantly improved the method efficiency, and the LOQ could be set far below the current MRL. On screen, you will find the automated extraction method. First, a combination of QDIS filters are placed at the bottom of a Q-cup, and four grams of tea are then weighed inside the tube. The sample ought to be covered either by laboratory-grade sand or by the use of a Q-screen. After loading the method and creating the batch, the edge instrument automatically loads each sample in the extraction chamber and begins the process. 10 mils of acetonitrile are added, heated up to 40 degrees Celsius at a pressure of about 2 bar for 150 seconds. The solvent is collected in a PTFE tube and then the sample is rinsed with another 5 mils of acetonitrile, which are also dispensed into the same PTFE tube. Sample extraction is done at this point, and after a brief instrument wash step, the next sample is ready for extraction in about 7 minutes of total runtime per sample. The extract is then simply evaporated, dissolved in ethyl acetate, and analyzed by GCM SNS. These are the chromatograms obtained with the developed method. Observe how there are no co-eluding signals in this case, and anthracinone can be identified using the same mass transitions initially optimized. In this case, again, deuterated anthracinone is not affected by any matrix interferences. What were these matrix interferences that arise in, in the manual extraction of T with a hydration step? Using a high-resolution accurate mass spectrometer by Agiland, caffeine and theobromine were identified as the main matrix interferences. These compounds share two fragments with anthracinone, 180 Dalton and 152 Dalton. In the top chromatogram, a small peak of anthracinone in green can be seen to stand within the extremely saturated peaks of caffeine in brown and theobromine in orange. In this case, a total ion chromatogram obtained with the same high resolution instrument is presented. In red, the baseline of the hydrated catches method, and in green, the baseline of the automated method. Observe how between minutes 9 and 10, there is a huge saturated peak of caffeine and theobromine in the manual method, which occupies a significant length of the chromatogram. However, in the case of the automated method, this peak is not saturated and is far less wide. Hence, Avoiding the hydration step reduces the amount of disco extracted compounds that interfere in the analysis of anthracinone. The automated method was applied to a sampling study of 90 real samples. Anthracinone was detected in one third of the samples analyzed, but this number rose to half of the samples if only T was considered. The concentration of anthracinone in every case was below the current MRL of 20 ppb. Finally, this method was also evaluated in a proficiency test, a ring test for anthracinone in black tea, obtaining a Z score of 0.1.
This confirms its performance for the analysis of the target compound in T. With this, the first section regarding method development is done, and I will move on to the application of the method to two different matrices, cocoa and coffee beans. The method developed for T was extended to two new matrices and to over 360 different pesticide residues. A net instrument was again employed for the automatic extraction of the samples, GC analysis were performed with an Agile and Intuitive instrument, and NLC analysis were carried out in a Psych 6500 Plus instrument. This was done in the context of a client activity within the URL. In this slide, the method validation parameters are presented. In sum, 363 unique pesticide residues were evaluated by LLC and GZ. However, this is the unique number of pesticide residues. Several of them are amenable both for LLC and GZ analysis, so in these cases, they were studied with both techniques. The evaluation was performed at 10 and 50 ppb and different validation parameters such as mean recovery, reproducibility and matrix effects were studied. In this slide, again, the automated extraction method and GC analysis is presented. As before, extraction is carried out with an edge instrument with a dilution factor of approximately four times. And then an aliquot of the final extract is evaporated, dissolved in acetyl acetate and directly injected in the GC tube instrument for analysis. In the case of LC analysis, the extraction procedure is the same one as shown before, but for the analysis, an aliquot of the extract is diluted five times with water and then injected into the instrument. The percentage of compounds with recovery values between 70 and 120% and relative standard deviations lower or equal to 20% is 92% for coffee at the 10 ppb level, 94% for cocoa at the same validation level. These values are increased to 98% in coffee at 50 ppb and 97% in cocoa at 50 ppb. It is worth noting that in coffee, while some compounds did not fulfill the validation requirements, all of them could be detected in the instrument. Regarding the matrix effect and linearity, which was studied in the 5 to 200 ppb concentration range, all of the previously presented compounds, which complied with the recovery and RSD requirements, were also linear in this range with the squared correlation coefficients higher than 0.99. Furthermore, as seen on this graph, over 75% of all validated compounds presented no matrix effect. Less than 20% of the target analytes presented a moderate matrix effect, and barely any of them had a strong matrix effect. Thus, the method was successfully applied to two new matrices for the validation of a um, multi residue method for different pesticide residues. The method was compared to a manual extraction of cocoa and coffee beans. First, the samples were hydrated and let to sit for 30 minutes. The samples were shaken automatically for 7 minutes in an actual agitator, then extraction salts were added to, and the samples were shaken again. After centrifugation, a 5 ml aliquot was transfer, transferred to a 15 ml PTFE tube for the dispersive solid phase cleanup step. After vortexing, vortexing and centrifuging these tubes, four mils were transferred to a glass vial, where the remaining PSA was neutralized with formic acid. This is the manual extraction procedure both for GC and LC analysis. In the case of GC analysis, a 50 microliter aliquot was evaporated under nitrogen and dissolved in ethyl acetate. In the case of LC analysis, an aliquot of the final extract was also diluted five times with water. Method performance was far worse in the case of the manual extraction method. Only 50% of compounds comply with the recovery and reproducibility requirements in coffee at the 10 ppb level, and this percentage rose just to 80% at 50 ppb. The number of non-detections was significant, 30% at 10 ppb and over 15% at 50 ppb in coffee. Regarding cocoa on the right, the situation was slightly better. Up to 70% of compounds had acceptable recoveries and relative standard deviation values at the 10 ppb level. However, the percentage of successfully validated compounds at the 50 ppb concentration level was similar to that in coffee, 82%. The differences between both extraction methods are more evident when placed side by side. In the case of the automated extraction, the percentage of compounds not fulfilling validation requirements is only significant in coffee at the 10 ppb concentration level, and non-detections are barely an issue. However, in the case of the manual extraction, the percentage of compounds not detected or not successfully validated in either matrix in both concentration levels is quite, quite significant. 
To sum everything up with a few key ideas, the interest in, autom in automation has increased in recent years. Instruments that automate sections of manual methods have existed for some time. Nevertheless, automatic extraction instruments such as the Edge will surely further the interest in these devices. Pressurized liquid extraction is a viable alternative for sample extraction of matrices that traditionally require a hydration step. Automated pressurized liquid extraction helps overcome the issues associated with the extraction and analysis of anthraginone from tea and other dry matrices. This method also performs better than a manual extraction method based on hydration for the extraction of pesticide residues from cocoa and coffee beans. In the future, we plan to continue working on automation in the following topics. As we did in the case of anthraginone, we want to perform a sampling study of real cocoa and coffee samples for the multi-residue analysis of pesticides. We want to study the viability of pressurized liquid extraction for the traditionally complex matrices like avocado. We are also interested in the extraction of cube amenable pesticides, as very energetic extraction conditions can be achieved with this instrument. And of course, we also want to develop new extraction methods that are fit for the analytes not successfully validated in this study. Before ending this presentation, I would like to thank the team at the URL of V for their help and technical support, in particular to the head of the laboratory, Dr. Amadeo uh, Rodriguez Fernandez Alba. And I would also like to thank CEM for their support during the method validation, in particular to Candice Calder. Uh, thank you very much, and Leanne, whatever you, you want. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Alicia Stell. Uh, Alicia Douglas Stell graduated magna cum laude from Bridgewater College with a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry and Mathematics. She received her PhD in Analytical Chemistry from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill where her research focused on the synthesis and characterization of silver and gold bimetal monolayer protected clusters. Dr. Stell has been with CEM since completing her graduate degree. She has had a number of publications in technical journey, journals spanning both her graduate career and a time at CEM. During her 12 years at CEM, she has held several positions within the company. She started her career in CEM's life science division where she played a key role in the development of the Liberty Peptide Synthesizer product line. Alicia then became one of the first members of a newly formed product development team that started the initial work on the EDGE automatic extraction system. Following her work with EDGE product development, Alicia helped form the Molecular Sample Preparation Division at CEM. Her extensive background in chromatographic analysis and her mechanical abilities have been instrumental in the development of the EDGE solvent extraction system and its applications. She has been leading the EDGE product since its exception and traveled the world to identify new markets and develop applications for this innovative technology. At this time, it is my pleasure to hand control over to Dr. Alicia Stell. Alicia, over to you. Thank you, Leanne, for that um, kind introduction. And thank you, Francisco, um, for your presentation as well. Um, we're truly grateful um, that we've been able to pull this together um, to be able to pre present these presentations live during this time. Um, so Francisco gave us a great presentation on the method development and validation and had a lot of data um, for the specific matrices that he was looking at. So my kind of take here is going to be more from a broad spectrum of giving you a good visual of exactly what the edge does and how it does what it's doing, and then um, expand it to some other matrices beyond those dry commodities that we have already talked about. Um, so it's gonna be a very more um, broad-based presentation um, here for this. This was um, intended as our vendor seminar that would have been at European Pesticide Residue Workshop. So, um, you know, kind of probably doesn't need to be said, but um, pesticides and food matrices present um, a very complicated challenge um, because if we look at just the pictures of the food matrices there, um, these are the ones I'm going to talk about in today's presentation. You see strawberries that are very, you know, have a lot of um, water content um, and um, sugars and carbohydrates. And then you've got avocado, where you've got something that has a lot more lipid content. And then you've got a dry commodity, such as a spice. And so each of these different food matrices brings a different complexity to the challenge of extracting, extracting the pesticides from these matrices. And furthermore, 
there's hundreds of pesticides that we need to look at. So any situation where you've got hundreds or thousands of pesticides to probably just as many different types of food matrices out there in the world, then obviously this is a complicated challenge. Um, and when we've got something that's you know, such a complicated challenge, if we have one instrument and or method protocol that can apply, then that's gonna be very favorable. Now, traditionally, um, the extraction of pesticides from food matrices is done with the catcher's method. Um, and I am not gonna get into the details of the catcher's method here. And um, I realize it's maybe a little bit small on your screen as well. Um, really what I want you to get from this visual here is the number of steps that's involved for catchers versus edge. What we're bringing to the table with the edge is automation, right? We're able to eliminate all these multiple manual steps that's currently required for the catcher's method. They are different techniques, okay? So edge is an alternative to the extraction of pesticides um, from food matrices. It's not doing the exact same chemistry. Um, as Francisco mentioned, it's pressurized fluid extraction. So it's a different technology, but it brings automation to the table and some other benefits as well that we'll talk a little bit more about. Before I get into that, I want you to have a good visual of what the edge is and how it runs. Um, you saw some pictures in Francisco's presentation, but I want to see, have you actually watch it run here. Um, you saw our chemist, Brittany, there take what we call our q disc that's our filtration, and drop it at the bottom of our Q-cup, our sample holder, and assemble it. Went together in seconds. It is made out of aluminum, so it can go directly on an analytical balance. You can weigh your sample directly in. Um, the racks that hold those sample cells are easily removable, so you can be preparing one rack as one rack is running. A few clicks and she's loaded the method and the edge is now running. The edge is going to take that Q cup, our sample cell, and put it into the chamber in the back there. The edge does run in series and the rack holds up to 12 samples. So it's going to run one right after the other. Once that Q cup is placed in the chamber, the actuator is going to come down and create a pressurized environment um, for within that chamber. Solvent can add by both the bottom and the top to fully wet your sample. Once solvent adds, you have the option of bubbling. And we'll talk a little bit about where bubbling can be more of an um, advantage to where Francisco saw that bubbling was not as effective for the dry matrices. Once bubbling is completed, the system then heats to a temperature and or hold time. Um, during that process, a pressure differential occurs, and so you get this dispersive effect where that solvent disperses up into the sample further leading to aiding the extraction process. Then your solvent's gonna drain through the sample, through the Q-disc, through a cooling coil. So what you collect is at room temperature and filtered, ready to go for analysis. What you're seeing here is that rinse, which Francisco saw really helped improve their recoveries, which is taking clean solvent, running it through the sample, and then collecting that in our vial as well. Um, now we mentioned that we are running in series here. So carryover is something that we need to be aware of. We wanna make sure that's not happening. So we're gonna remove the Q-cup and then we're gonna wash the entire fluidic pathway with solvent so that you are sure that you're not carrying over anything into the next sample that then is going to run. And you'll see the edge do that now as it goes to our waste port in the back and dispenses that um, waste solvent into the waste container over there on the right. Now pictured here are our glass files, which is an option to collect in. If you feel more comfortable collecting in centrifuge tubes, that is also an option on the edge. Um, so you have a couple different collection options um, for what is you know, gonna be better for your workflow in your lab. And what Brittany is gonna show us here, she's gonna take that Q-cup that was just full of solvent and show that that sample is now completely dry. Um, and that just gives you that feel good moment that you recovered everything. They got all that solvent out, and um, that solvent is particulate-free, filtered, ready to go to analysis. So I hope that video gave you a perspective on how the edge is doing what it's doing. Um, and um, you know, I think that that visual just, for me, pictures speak louder in words. So being able to see it run um, brings a lot to the table. So now what I want to do is kind of talk about edge as an alternative catchers and some of the benefits. Um, that you get when you consider um, edge for this um, extraction of pesticides. So first, um, you know, 
Catchers is really popular. And I think the reason it's so popular is because of how applicable it is, right? It's a multi-matrix, multi-residue method. We talked about that at the beginning of the presentation where, where you have a lot of different food stuff and a lot of different pesticides, you want a method that applies to a lot of that scenario. Um, and that's true for catchers, but it's also true for edge. And I hope when we, when we talk through this presentation and what you saw in Francisco's presentation is that it's even more so true for the edge because now we can address dry matrices in a much more efficient manner. Um, so it really kind of even broadens the spectrum of that multi-matrix um, looking at that. Part of the second step of the catcher's method is a dispersive solid phase extraction cleanup step. Um, and if you want to include a cleanup step, you can do that on the edge as well. And you just do that in cell. So any sorbents that you wanted to use for cleanup, you can just put that in your Q cup and then you get that cleanup step. Um, now, I will say that the majority of the um, samples that um, we tend to work on, that cleanup step is not necessarily required, um, but that's certainly an option if it's something um, that you need to do for your particular sample. What I hope you saw in the presentation is how simple this is. Um, we really, um, simplicity and easy use, um, it brings a lot to the modern world. And, and, you know, we're very busy. There's a lot going on in our labs. Um, and so having something that's simple and quick frees up our time so we can go in and doing other things. Um, and the edge brings simplicity and speed to the table. Um, temperature controlled extraction. Um, I think that's a really key point here. Um, in that catcher's method, when you're doing that salt partitioning extraction, it is exothermic. Um, you know, if you're running that extraction, you feel those tubes while you're shaking them, you know, that's getting hot and you can't control that heat. And um, not heat is not amenable to all pesticides. Um, you can start to break down some pesticides and get low recoveries um, if the temperature is not controlled properly. And so on the edge, you have complete control of that environment. And as you'll see, we run it fairly low temperatures. Um, the method I'm going to present here is 40 C, but you can even go down as low as 30 C. And so you can control and, and it's not going to exceed that temperature and have a very um, you know, controlled environment for the temperature and pressure. And that really aids in that extraction. Another thing that um, Francisco touched upon in his presentation is that we're seeing less matrix effects. Um, so that's just an added benefit um, that you get by running, you know, this automated process. And then lastly, uh, because it's automated, you're removing the human error aspect of it. Um, you're seeing better efficiency. Um, so there's a lot of benefits beyond just the fact that it is widely applicable that you might want to consider for running the edge for the extraction of pesticides from a variety of different matrices. Now I want to hit upon just that sim simplicity, because um, I think that's a lot is, um, that it brings to the table as far as the um, sample prep that's required pre and post um, extraction on the edge, which is very minimal. Um, now what I have written out here is for a strawberry sample, so for a wet sample. So I'm using that as my example. Um, so not all of these steps are required depending on um, primarily that add Q matrix hydra, which I'll explain in a second, um, are going to be necessary for all matrices. Um, but um, this is, um, again, one to point out for a wet matrix such as strawberries. So first, you would assemble your Q cup. So you drop in that Q disk. You saw that in the video. And then you assemble that Q cup. And that happens in just seconds. Then you would, for a wet matrix, add 2.5 grams of Q matrix hydra to the bottom of the Q cup. Now, what is Q-matrix hydra? Well, Q-matrix hydra is a um, polymer superabsorbent that absorbs water. It is proprietary to CEM, so we um, sell this particular product, um, and it is just great at removing water. Um, for the catcher's method, the water is necessary. As we talked about in Francisco's presentation, he had to um, rehydrate those samples for that type of method. However, on the edge, that water is not aiding in the extraction. So we actually have to be able to remove that so that we don't have water in our extract at the end and we have an organic extract that can go direct to analysis. Um, so that Q matrix hydra plays a big important role for wet matrices. Um, now for those dry matrices, this step is not necessary. You then weigh in the um, sample, as you saw that Q cup is um, very light, goes direct onto the analytical balance. In this case, we're going to weigh in 10 grams of strawberries um, to run our extraction. 
Then you load your Q-cup and your vial, whether it's a glass vial or a centrifuge tube, that is your option to collect your extract and you choose your method on the edge. So really, you know, this happens very quickly. A matter of minutes, everything's prepped and ready to run. So I am going to walk through the method that we ran for the matrices um, that I am going to discuss here. But I want to mention that this is a pretty broad-based method um, that is applicable to a wide variety of matrices. But what you saw in Francisco's presentation is where he was able to method develop for a specific matrix. Okay, so these are kind of the extreme values. Um, this is kind of using the most amount of solvent and time, and we're going to put bubbly in there. We're just going to basically put everything at it that you can use, but then you can take this broad-based method and method develop it to, um, you know, specific if you have a specific matrix. Um, but what you'll see in my presentation here is that we were able to apply this matrix, this particular method, to a wide um, variety of matrices. Um, as you can see here, it has two cycles. That second cycle is a rinse only. So you'll notice that it has um, zero top bottom um, and um, no temperature, no hold time. It only is gonna add 10 mils of a rinse volume. So it just adds clean solvent and then collects that. Probably cannot read the details of the first cycle there. So if I click over, if you click that little edit button at the top, um, it pulls up this screen and then you can um, see it in this format. I hope you see these are taken directly from our software, um, so it's really user-friendly, um, and you have a lot of control too. So that's great for an R&D environment of how much control you have, but also you've got that ease of use in addition to all that control. So what you can see is that in this case, we have a I trial with 1% acetic acid as our solvent. Um, this is cycle one, and um, we did a top volume out of 10, a bottom volume out of 5, and then an additional rinse of five, and then that second cycle is another 10 mil rinse. Um, so that would have been the total volume um, um, collected in the combination of those two cycles. Our temperature is 40 degrees C. Um, we have a hold time of two minutes and a bubbling time of one minute. Um, so I think Francisco mentioned that the method he had was under seven minutes. This method remains in that time frame. Um, so um, seven minutes per sample. And, and keep in mind that as soon as that sample is done, it's ready to go for analysis. So it's really quick turnaround for um, an R&D situation. I like to throw up the wash parameters um, when I talk about our method as well, because um, carryover may be overlooked sometimes, but it's so crucial to good data. So um, I just want to show how many controls you have to ensure you have good washes. Um, for pesticides, one wash is sufficient with a seed and nitrile, um, 10 mils. We hold that for just three seconds at 40 degrees C. Um, but you, um, if you had a really hot sample or needed a more aggressive wash, you have control of all these parameters. You can do up to five different washes with different solvents. Um, the edges um, has six solvent lines, so you can use up to six different solvents for um, the washing parameters. So um, I just like to show that you have a lot of flexibility. So again, great for that R&D environment um, on the wash parameters as well. And then before we get to analysis, I do want to note that it's best practice to dilute to a known volume. Um, and this is specific for pesticide extraction. If you're doing any other types of extraction, you may concentrate down. That's certainly an option as well. Um, but you just want to make sure that you have confirmed that final volume for good quantitative analysis and then um, transfer to an LC vial. In this case, we did all LC work, but obviously um, a GC um, amenable um, work is applicable as well. So transfer to your GC or LC vial and then go direct to analysis. In our lab, which is the data that I'll be presenting here, we were doing UTLC MS MS um, analysis. We have a Waters um, H class acuity with a Zevo TQD, so that's the system that we ran. And um, this method is simply based off of one of Waters' application notes um, for the extraction or for the analysis of pesticides. So a pretty standard method for the analysis here for the pesticides that we were looking at. Um, we are doing um, MS-MS analysis, so we're looking at MRM transitions. So you see some of the um, MRM transitions peaks here, and you just see that we have good peak shape, and we're able to identify the pesticides that we're looking for. So now I want to get into some of the data um, that we looked at, and as I mentioned, I'm going to cover um, 
some a variety of matrices here, starting with strawberries. Um, and with strawberries, that's kind of the quintessential catcher's matrix, right? If you kind of look at catchers, you're probably going to see an example, and they're probably going to use strawberries. Um, and so we wanted to compare that because it's such the kind of just iconic standard matrix um, for these wet um, fruits and vegetables. Um, and what's great is there's a CRM available. Um, more and more CRMs are becoming available in the food sector, and that is just great. Um, so I'm really happy to see these food CRMs become available. So in this case, we ran the strawberry CRM, and um, we compared it to catchers. And so we did 10 grams of um, this method that I showed you on the edge, and then 10 grams based on the catcher's AOC, to, um, AOC method for catchers. And um, what you see here is we get comparable results compared to edge and catchers. And like I said, strawberries is kind of like what catchers was developed for. It's a very amenable matrix for the catchers method. So we'd expect to see good results for the catchers. Um, and so it's really great that we see comparable results on the edge for a matrix that can be a little bit more challenging on the edge because as we no noted, um, that water content is not something that we need um, present and we actually have to work at removing that for an edge extraction. Um, so now I wanna move on to um, dry matrices and Francisco did a great job of talking about those um, dry matrices. Um, so I won't spend too much time and again, I'm giving more of a broad based method here, but as Francisco mentioned, when we compare this to a catcher's method um, and you know that AOC 2007.0 web method, we need to make some modifications to it to hydrate it essentially. Um, and as also bolded there is you see that we took the sample size down a little bit too. So we're no longer using 10 grams, we're now using two grams and we're adding water and letting that hydrate before we complete that extraction so that we're putting our best foot forward for this manual method here. Um, so just keep a note that we made those modifications to the catcher's method for the data presented here. If we look at the data, and this is just a subset of paprika and cinnamon um, that we looked at, you'll see um, that we actually see an improved recovery. And that is um, in, in con, um, consistent with what Francisco was able to see for these dry matrices as well. Um, so where we get comparable for a wet matrix, we're now getting better recoveries for these dry matrices we looked at here. Um, I do want to note, you see an asterisk at the bottom of the slide there that we used a Q screen here. Um, Francisco also mentioned the Q screen. Um, and what the Q screen is, it's just it's a um, stainless steel um, mesh that um, you put on top of the sample that keeps that sample down in the solvent. Some of these dry commodities um, have a tendency to maybe float um, and that you just want everything compressed at the bottom of the cell for best extraction. And that Q screen is going to enable you to do that. Um, and bubbling, right? So Francisco noted that bubbling was not um, advantageous for these dry commodities. Um, and we'll talk about it um, in my conclusion slide or in the next uh, matrix as well. We'll get into it a little bit more. Um, but really that bubbling um, really helps those wet matrices that are more um, slurry-like, right? So for something that you really do when you bubble, you can imagine that it gets it to agitate. Where a bed of like solid uh, matrices such as a powder or a spice isn't going to really mix up as much um, with that capacity. So you have to keep your matrix in mind of where bubbling um, really does bring stuff to the table. Um, so for those strawberries, that bubbling proportion is actually quite important, um, where for something like spices, um, bubbling is not necessary. So the final matrix I'm going to talk about is avocado. Um, and this is just a known difficult matrix in the world of pesticide extraction. Um, primarily because it is so fatty um, and, and it creates this kind of pace. It's a difficult sample to work with. So um, for that, we did increase our volume. Just like if you look at the asterisk at the bottom from the method that I showed at the very beginning, we did increase our volume slightly um, by 10 mils up to 40 mils total. Um, and in this case, we actually pre-mixed with key matrix hydro. So it's kind of continuing that conversation about um, bubbling there you know there was the strawberries the bubbling works great at mixing that Q matrix hydra with the strawberries in that slurry format but when you have something that is paste like with the avocado it's not as effective there 
Um, so we mentioned to, we suggest you pre-mix that sample. So you just kind of stir it up in the few cup prior to extraction so that Q-matrix hydrate is mixed in with the avocado sample. Um, but what you see with the um, recoveries and RSD values here is that we see that same trend for this difficult matrix as we saw for the um, spices. So we actually get better results in comparison to catchers for this difficult matrix. And note, we're not actually doing any cleanup in this particular method. Um, so adding in some cleanup to really address the um, additional lipid content there might even improve these results even further. Um, so there's some opportunity here um, where the edge is um, applicable for these um, high matrices, um, difficult matrices um, compared to catchers. So with that, I'm going to conclude this portion of the presentation. What I hope you've seen is the edge achieved good recoveries and RSD values for the extraction of strawberry, spices, and avocado, so a wide mix of samples, um, and that we achieved equivalent or better recoveries compared to catchers. And that overall edge is a rapid, simple, and efficient alternative for the extraction of pesticides from really all food matrices.